lymphocyte migration occurs during homing to lymphoid organs, exit from the vasculature, and entry into peripheral tissues. This process involves the adhesive interaction of the T-cell surface with other cells. To examine this phenomenon in vitro, human T lymphocytes are isolated, cultured, and placed on tissue culture plates coated with the adhesive protein ICAM1 and chemokine SDF1. Images of T lymphocyte migration can then be acquired and analyzed. Hi, I'm Craig LaFort in the laboratory of Minsu Kim in the Center for Vaccine Biology and Immunology at the University of Rochester. Today, we'll show you a procedure for the isolation and culture of human T lymphocytes and analysis of their migration in vitro. We use this assay in our laboratory to study the role of integrins in T cell migration. The major integrin in T cells is lymphocyte function associated antigen 1, or LFA1. The specific ligands for LFA1 are the ICAMs, such as ICAM1. In addition, a chemokine signal is required for T cell migration to provide both a directionality signal as well as to activate integrins. In our assay, we use human ICAM1 and CXCL12, or SDF1, as substrates for T-cell migration. So let's get started. After obtaining human blood from a healthy donor, allow the blood to cool to room temperature. This takes about 30 minutes. Once the blood is cooled, gently pipette 3 milliliters of room temperature polymorph density gradient media into an 8 milliliter round bottom polystyrene tube. Then, gently add 3 milliliters of whole blood on top. It is important to avoid any mixing. Place the tubes in a centrifuge and spin at 500 G for 45 minutes at room temperature. Following the centrifugation, the peripheral blood mononuclear cells, or PBMCs, have been separated from the other blood components. The PBMC layer appears as the first cloudy band from the top. Under sterile conditions, carefully remove and discard the clear yellow-colored upper phase. Then use a P1000 micropipette to transfer the PBMC layer to a new conical tube. Wash the PBMC twice with PBS, centrifuging cells at 500 G for 5 minutes each time. The supernatant will be somewhat cloudy after each wash. Resuspend the cells in 20 milliliters of RPMI 1640 media, containing 10% FBS, 1% penicillin streptomycin, and 1 microgram per milliliter phytohemagglutinin, or PHA. Incubation in the presence of PHA induces T lymphocyte activation and expansion. Using a pipette, transfer the PBMCs to a T75 culture flask. Next, incubate at 37 degrees Celsius and 5% carbon dioxide for 1 to 24 hours. This step allows monocytes, which will adhere to the flask surface, to be separated from the lymphocytes that remain in suspension. Following the incubation, carefully remove all of the media which contains primarily lymphocytes and transfer it to a 50 milliliter conical tube. Centrifuge at 500 G for 5 minutes. Resuspend the cell pellet in RPMI 1640 and transfer the cells to a new T75 flask containing 25 milliliters of RPMI 1640 with FBS, penicillin streptomycin, and PHA. Incubate at 37 degrees Celsius. After 24 hours of growth, it may be necessary to add 15 to 20 milliliters of fresh media and transfer to a larger T175 flask. Continue incubating for three days, or two days if the initial incubation of PBMC was overnight. After three days, Use a pipette to remove the medium, which will contain suspended lymphocytes, and transfer it to a 50 milliliter conical tube. Centrifuge at 500 G for 5 minutes. Resuspend the cell pellet and transfer the cells to a new T75 containing 25 milliliters of RPMI 1640 with FBS, penicillin streptomycin, and human IL-2 or IL-15. Place the cells in the incubator. If starting a T75 flask, the culture will need to be expanded and transferred to a T175 flask after one to two days. Grow lymphocytes for a total of four to seven days. 
One day before the migration assay, coat a glass bottom 0.17 millimeter dish with 20 micrograms per milliliter of protein A or G in PBS. Incubate overnight at four degrees Celsius. The next day, wash the dish extensively with PBS. Then, add ICAM1FC and human SDF1 in PBS solution to the dish. Incubate for four hours at room temperature to immobilize the molecules. Determine the density of the cultured cells using a hemocytometer. Then, wash T lymphocytes twice with PBS and resuspend them in one milliliter of L15 media containing D-glucose. Following the incubation, wash the coated dish with ICAM1FC and SDF1 extensively with PBS. Transfer the T lymphocytes in one milliliter of media to the dish. Approximately two to five times 10 to the fifth cells should be used per dish to achieve a cell density appropriate for migration analysis. To obtain images of cell migration, place the dish on the microscope stage in a temperature-controlled environment, such as a heated chamber at 37 degrees Celsius. Open the NIS Elements software. In the Image Settings menu, choose 2x2 binning as the mode for both live imaging and image capture. Go to the Applications menu and choose Define Run Experiment. Choose the length of time between images and the total time for the image capture sequence. Press the Run button to begin image acquisition. Following the acquisition, migration parameters such as velocity, path length, and displacement can be quantified using a software package such as ImageJ, AutoQuant, or Velocity. To generate a spiderweb plot, Collect the XY coordinates for each cell and time point and project them onto a graph with a common starting point for each cell at the origin. The T lymphocytes shown here were cultured, plated on ICAM and SDF1, and imaged every 10 seconds for 30 minutes. This movie shows the random migration of T lymphocytes at a velocity of approximately 15 microns per minute. Using the XYT coordinates for each cell, 15 cells were chosen at random and plotted with a common starting point at the origin. Comparing spiderweb plots gives a quick visual depiction of differences in migration between different experimental conditions. Plots for T lymphocyte migration under control conditions are shown on the left, while plots for T lymphocyte migration in the presence of an anti-LFA1 ligand blocking antibody are shown on the right. These data demonstrate that T lymphocytes utilize integrin LFA1 to migrate on an ICAM1 substrate. We've just shown you how to do a migration assay using cultured human T lymphocytes. During the procedure, it's, it's important to remember to add an appropriate number of cells to the ICAM-1 coated dish so that cell tracking and analysis of migration are simplified. So that's it. Thanks for watching and good luck with your experiments.